right, this is concept four notes. That should say concept four. I'll switch that. Um, for genetic engineering. So, genetic engineering, this is the process of replacing specific genes in an organism in order to ensure that the organism expresses a desired trait, so we're purposely manipulating genes. This is often accomplished by taking genes from one organism and placing them into another. And this can only occur, though, if we actually know where genes are on specific chromosomes. So we have to know where they're located. Luckily, we do know that because we can look at gene maps, which show the location of genes on chromosomes. We also have genomes, which will show all the genetic material in an organism. And the Human Genome Project mapped the DNA sequence of human genes. So we do have a map of all human genes. We're going to talk through five types of genetic engineering and the benefits and drawbacks of each. So first is cloning. This is where we take an identical copy of a gene or an entire organism and we um, we take and we make an identical copy. That's what I meant. And this can occur naturally or it can be engineered. Because um, you have to think mitosis is making identical cells, but um, we're talking more about this being engineered. Benefits is we could do this to um, for organ transplants. We could also use it to save endangered species. Drawbacks are genetic disorders and health problems, which we saw um, in the first cloned organism, which was Dolly. Dolly the sheep. Gene therapy would be inserting a normal gene into a place where a gene is absent or it's abnormal. So the benefit would be the inserted gene could now make the correct protein, which could eliminate the cause of the disorder. The drawback is it has limited success because the host often rejects the injected DNA. All right, stem cells. These are undifferentiated cells that have the potential to become anything. We learned about them in our cells unit. Um, remember, they could become any type of cells. Um, the benefit is that we could use them to replace tissue that's deficient or um, damaged due to disease. The drawback is um, the best stem cells that are the least differentiated are from embryos. Um, and then the ones in adult bone marrow are semi-differentiated. So they're not exactly easy to get. All right, then there's selective breeding. So if you've been feeling anti-genetic engineering, at this point you may change your mind because all of us pretty much interact with selective breeding. And this is when we artificially breed organisms in order to get a desired trait. So almost all domesticated animals and crops are the result of selective breeding. So we're taking, excuse me, maybe two tomato plants that have done really well and we're purposely breeding them to get really great tomatoes. Or we're taking, um, you know, two dogs and breeding them because we want certain traits from those dogs. The problem is inbreeding um, when we cross individuals that are really closely related. So the benefit of offspring tend to be stronger than either parent um, because they have these desired traits, but the problem is they can have genetic complications, um, especially if the parents are too similar to each other because of inbreeding. We see this in labs all the time. They have um, serious hip issues because of um, generations of inbreeding. And then hybridization, which is pretty fun. This is when we breed two organisms that show two traits um, in, um, in order to get both of those traits expressed, and we're breeding two different species. So we got a picture of a liger here, a lion bred with a tiger. Um, the benefit is that offspring tend to be stronger and more fit than either parents, and the drawback is it's very expensive and it's also, you know, unnatural. Um, now, this may seem random, but it is re related. Gel electrophoresis is a lab method that allows scientists um, to separate DNA, RNA, or proteins on molecular size. And they, they can. this is great because we could take DNA from a crime scene and then we could use this process to compare it to DNA of different suspects to see if the bands match up. Because the bands match up, you have a DNA match. Um, this is related because we wouldn't be able to do this if we didn't know um, as much as we know about genes and their locations on chromosomes which is what genetic engineering is all about. So last, we're going to talk about some societal impacts of genetic engineering. Um, first is we've been able to make plants that um, have natural insecticides that are high in protein, that spoil more slowly. And we've been able to make uh, animals that are bigger and faster growing and resistant to disease. We've been able to develop bacteria um, to produce a hum human insulin and human growth hormone. Um, in humans, transplant copies of normal genes into the cells of people suffering from genetically carried disease. That's a huge thing. 
So there's some really great positives, but there's some, also some negatives. It's important to consider either side.